Good morning, y'all. It's Julie, the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Today is Wednesday, July 25th, and I'm back for a big update. It's been a couple weeks since I've seen everyone, or since y'all have seen me. It's been busy. I'm going to do life update, shop update, stitchy update, you know, all the all the things. Same as every other time, I guess. Um, I want to start with my trip. So you guys know I was gone for a week, um, especially if you're a customer of my customer of mine at the shop. I thank you so much for your understanding while I was gone. Um, it was amazing. So as you, most of you know, Sarah is the commanding officer. She's the CO for um, the Navarre High School Raider Battalion, which is a 165 kids, um, which is a very large unit for high school ROTC in our area, especially for Navy as we're an Air Force area. We're wedged between um, two Air Force bases. One of them is Hurlburt, which is the largest Air Force base in the United States. But we do have Pensacola NAS, Naval Air Station, um, but that's, you know, about 35 miles away, I guess. Something like that. Anyway, it was a whirlwind trip. I'm going to try to remember all the things we did because it was so cool. Just so cool. So we started our trip off, left the high school in a charter bus. Thank you, Jesus. It was air conditioned and very comfortable. And it had power supply at every seat for your devices, which I'll get into what I watched in a minute, in a little while. But we went um, to Jacksonville State University, which is a private school, which has a Navy ROTC program. Um, real quick note on that, parents, if you're confused about ROTC and how it works and paying for school, I can speak to Navy. So basically, it's a two-for-one um, commitment. So if your child signs up for a four-year scholarship or accepts a four-year scholarship, they're um, making an eight-year commitment, which is kind of scary, but at the same time, like, what are you going to be doing eight years from now anyway is kind of what I look at it, and if they go in when they're 18, like, eight years later, they're 26, and you can do whatever you want with the degree that you've had paid for. It just seems like a great idea to me, but anyway, that aside, um, there's two ways to enter the ROTC to have the Navy pay for college. One is this, what's called the scholarship program. So you, it's highly competitive and you have to be like a super student. You have to, in most cases, be an outstanding member of your community, maintain a job, maintain a letter in a varsity sport, have glowing letters of recommendation, have awesome ACT and SAT scores. Um, the list is very long. It's super competitive for the scholarship. The good news is, is that there's a second program called College Program. So basically... You're a freshman in college, wherever you choose to go, that there's a Navy program, and you're responsible for payment for the first year. So you get student loans, you use grants, um, you can use Pell Grant money, however you would normally pay for college, like however your plan was, but you're still a member of the unit. Then at the end of your freshman year, going into sophomore year, you can apply for the Navy scholarship again, and that is where the bulk of most people get picked up, because now your letters of recommendation come from senior naval instructors in the college that you want to attend. So it really weights your application a lot more. So that was interesting for me to learn because I didn't know, like, okay, if she doesn't, if Sarah doesn't get a Navy scholarship, which I'm prayerful that she's a shoe in for, if she doesn't get that, what does that mean for, you know, her financial future, really? It just means that she'll apply again her sophomore year. And every year... So you can do the same thing into your junior, you know, you can get from freshman into sophomore, sophomore into junior, junior into senior, all the way. Um, every year having a little better odds because you've got more history behind you, provided that you performed well. So we got to do that, Jacksonville State University. Um, most private schools also have programs to roll in room and board in this. To give you like an idea of what that means, at Jacksonville State, the room and board for one year is $22,000. So, I'm prayerful that she picks a private university, but if she does not, that's okay. We'll do whatever we have to do. But um, most big public colleges, like Georgia Tech, which we also toured, um, they do not offer a room and board option, so you would just use your grant money, student loans, cash, whatever you got you know, commute, whatever works for your family, you and your family. Um, but I think it's a smoking deal to get the room and board included. I mean, all your meals and 
Um, the Navy also gives you a monthly stipend, so you've also got gas money and snack money and Starbucks money and all this thing, pizza money that you need as a as a college student. So that's a great that that's in the next 12 months I'll be updating you guys on where Sarah's at with that and what exactly is happening with her with that. So Jacksonville State University, we went to the USS Lassen, which is a surface destroyer. It is a still active vessel, so it was completely staffed, which was fantastic. The kids got to talk to uh, sailors, to the chief engineer, to um, the commanding officer of the ship, everybody. So that was really awesome. Because here in the Panhandle, we have like the USS Alabama, which is decommissioned. There are decommissioned naval ships docked in several parts across the places across the country where you can tour them but they're like a ghost town and it's really neat to see people actually doing their daily job on there so that was awesome um i don't know what we did next i think next stop was paris island you heard it paris island u.s marine recruit depot i cannot wait to post pictures i'm gonna post pictures on instagram i tried to hold my phone up when i tried to film this video before and you just can't get the full effect because the glare and all that's weird I will say I'm not allowed to post any video from the Recruit Depot as they don't want any future recruits to find that stuff on, you know, YouTube. I mean, there's stuff out there, but I'm certainly not going to be the one to post it because they've asked me not to. Um, but I have some still photos and some awesome video. I am going to share one video on my Instagram, and that is Sarah commanding the cadets, marching them to chow the morning of our second day. Um... They just did real good. And it's just her. It's the cadets. Um, it's not the inside of a building. It's between two of the squad bay barracks. Um, but it doesn't really let let out any like secret information that they don't want out into the world. I will tell y'all that was one of the most humbling experiences of my life ever. Every, I would say not every adult female. That's ridiculous. But most everyone has seen... Movies depicting Marine Corps recruit training. I will tell you that within the first probably 15 minutes, the DI, who, they're everything you expect them to be. I mean, loud, obnoxious, squared away, um, perfectly physically fit, perfectly in uniform, um, exemplary in everything they say and do. The first thing, like one of the first things they addressed with us was, this is not Hollywood. And the things that you see on TV are a very watered down, often scandalized version of what really happens. So, um, I kept thinking, I thought several times about Christine, stitch all the things. Christine, your baby's okay. It's intense. I... I met recruits and saw recruits, didn't really meet them, that's not the right word, engaged with recruits at all levels of Marine Corps training in their 13-week recruit training. And I will tell you that um, it's hard, but they're well taken care of. They really are. So, your baby's okay. My baby was okay only for two days, but your baby's okay. And I'll tell you that once we got back on the bus, most of the kids, while we were there, they were like, get us away from here. We hate this. This is horrible. Um, you know, what did we, why did you do this to us? When we left, they said that they think every ROTC student should have that opportunity in the years following. And um, they all kind of missed parts of it. Parts of it, not so much, but parts of it they did miss. So we were met with a screaming DI jumping on the bus. Um, March, you know, there's lots of things they did. I, I could go on and on forever, but... Um, the, the thing that was just so humbling was the, and I'll, I won't be able to share p pictures of this on Instagram, but they went to, um, what's called the yellow footprints, which is where all the recruits who come off the bus onto Paris Island, they also do this in San Diego. They walk, they jump off the bus and they walk and they stand on a set of yellow footprints and there's enough yellow footprints for the whole battalion. And 20,000 20, prospective, like, potential um, Marines stand on those every single year. 20,000. Only 35% um, make it through that training. But they were real clear to let us know that it is um, 
that their their goal is to get every single person through. They don't benefit anything from you not making it through recruit training, but um, a lot of it's physical people, physical and mental, of course. Um, and also, there's like a lot of medical testing that happens and um, things that just kind of wash people out, or they just think, "Hey, this isn't for me." Um, but twenty thousand people a year stand on those steps, and it's like it's pretty hollowed ground. It was amazing. And we got to see kids who just, I mean, still in their civilian clothes, fresh off the bus, just got their haircuts, had only been there for about four hours. And then we got to see people who were in their 13th week of training, which is the last week, and they graduate a class every single Friday from Paris Island. So patriotism, there are patriots out there. There are young patriots, um, you know, 18 to 25 years old is the average there, of course, and I don't really know what the top age is. But it was hard for a lot of the younger kids because even with our group, like some of these kids have never been yelled at by an adult in their entire life. They've had everything handed to them. They've never done anything. Other kids have never left the small town that they live in, have never ventured out of the county that they live in. Like there's definitely a, a recruit representative of every group out there that you could think of from all walks of life. So it was pretty humbling. Um, one last thing about that trip, about that stop that I just want to mention is the moment that gave me chills the most. So, you know, our kids are marching in the rain. Um, our, our battalion is um, in the top of the area for drill. So that's like all the marching. And Sarah's the commander. So she's been commanding drill since... She's been started commanding some drill meets in her freshman year. So they're squared away. When they drill, it looks good. They looked better. I mean, even the DI said that they looked better than some of the recruits that were like in their third or fourth week of training, which was such a compliment to, to them and to us as parents and to everybody involved. Now, um, when we saw, so everywhere you go, you're, you know, encountering, I mean, there's a lot of people that come there. It's a, it's a huge recruit depot and everywhere you go you're encountering um, platoons of soldiers future soldiers um, you can quickly tell by looking at them who is in what stage of training which is pretty cool they don't allow the newbies to blouse their pants into their boots and until they can conduct themselves like marines so you can see them rolling you know walking around marching around with their pants rolled up um, they're not ready yet if someone gets in trouble, if a platoon gets in trouble for any reason, they, at the beginning of every marching platoon, there's what's called a guide on, which is like their flag for their platoon. And there's a person holding that flag that's always leading um, on the opposite side of the commanding officer. And the ones who are in trouble or didn't perform at the level that the DIs thought they will, they have their platoon guide on flags rubber banded. So... They're not, um, they're not worthy of flying that platoon's flag, which I think is awesome. The flip side of this, the reason I tell you all this is we were going to chow on the last morning. And that's the morning that I have a video that I can share of Sarah marching them to chow. And we were passed by a platoon of, I mean, sharp, squared away, marching perfectly, uh, recruits. I mean, they, it gave me chills. What gave me chills more than that is you've all heard on movies and TV, you've heard the commanders or the DIs calling cadence, you know, that the whole left, right, left, right. Well, Marines do it a whole different way. And so does the Navy. They're kind of similar with that. But when the platoon is behaving well, a reward for them is for their DI to sing Jody's or sing in cadence. And I get chills just telling y'all. This DI, he was um, big, buff, sharp, squared away, in perfect condition in every way, shape, or form. His recruits were stellar. And he was singing cadence. He was singing... Um, and it was beautiful. It was a show off. It was a show off for them. He marched them right past us into chow, which was kind of out of the way into the chow hall. It was a show off for them. It gave me chills. Um, if you're not familiar with what any of that means, 
you Google it on YouTube, um, DI's uh, singing cadence. Um, it's it's beautiful. I mean, it was like uh, I'm telling you, it was beautiful. So that was my highlight. I didn't have a low um, at Paris Island. We slept in the barracks. I was real worried about that because y'all know I'm an AC girl. There was no AC. Newsflash, I didn't expect there to be, but then they said, oh yeah, it's, there's comforts. No, there's not. We slept in bunks without AC, but we did have a fan. Um, the girls did wonderful. The guys did wonderful. The girls um, had to like refold the sheets for the guys because they didn't do a good job. Um, it was really awesome team building. I didn't really have a low there. The food was good for, we ate with the DIs, so we had good food. The recruits did not have good food. Um, their food is like nutritionally balanced, but not seasoned whatsoever. Because why would you need that when you're like being, you know, they're trying to knock the individuality out of you really. So that's the whole purpose. Like the whole purpose of the 13 week recruit training, as was explained to me by our DI, who was amazing, was they have to deprogram everything out of these kids that, that they thought they knew about how to exist. You know, they have to teach them everything. They teach them everything. How to tie a shoe right, how to eat with their right hand, even if they're left-handed, how to make a bed, how to fold a towel, um, all the way to how to be a soldier. So um, they spend the first half or so getting, getting all of the stuff that they've, all the bad habits they've picked up in their life out, and then they build them up. And they're not teaching them, like, anything in depth. It's just so many, like, little things. I don't know. I could go on and on. 16 minutes in, and I'm still talking about this trip. But anyway, it was wonderful. I, it was a experience that I'll never forget. I thought of Christine many times. I thought how lucky I was to see my, to be standing there while my daughter experienced this. And I didn't feel the least bit protective of her or... Um, like at any point that I needed to um, save her from anything, she had it. She had it under control. It was wonderful. It was great to see the kids flourish and to see how in just the first 24 hours with our DI that we had, who was um, Sergeant Ira, Ira, sorry, A-Y-R-A, -A, Sergeant Ira, just seeing how far they came in 24 hours as far as like getting their life together and like getting on and off the bus and getting formed up and doing everything they needed to do was amazing. So I can imagine how they would be after 13 weeks. So, um, Christine from one mama to another, I was able to witness a lot of people come through there in the past. And I spent a few days there and, um, I know that your son is not a Marine. However, I can tell you that he's in good hands. So, super exciting. So, enough about the Paris Island Recruit Depot because I could go on and on forever. Um, from that, we went to the, we went on up to Atlanta. We went to Dobbins Reserve Air Force Base where we stayed um, on lo lodging on Dobbins Air Force Base. So, that was nice. We went to the Coast Guard Station, Savannah, where the kids were able to get on um, the Dolphin helicopters, which are search and rescue helicopters. Rescue swimmer helicopters. It was pretty exciting. Um, we discussed some of the most recent rescues that they made. We saw a lot of really cool photos and talked to people who were involved in those. Um, the Coast Guard is the smallest branch of the armed forces, and they do some harrowing things. Like, they are there when civilians, like, screw up or do things that weren't smart, like going out you know, in weather, in bad weather, or having a vessel that's ill-prepared, or just swimming in, you know, into a rip current. I mean, they're, the Coast Guard, here locally where I live, I'm surrounded by water. I'm on a peninsula. Um, I see the Coast Guard quite often, and honestly, I don't think, didn't think as much about, like, how much they do for the civilians, really. Um, they are there. Whenever you need them, they're there. So, um, rescue swimmers get my get my like complete support and admiration because let me tell you in like 15 20 foot seas um treading water being dropped in there at night that is not for me i'm so grateful that there's people that do that when when an emergency calls they're there so that was awesome 
Then we went on to the Martin Luther King um, Memorial and to the United States Civil Rights Museum, which was fantastic. It's one of my favorite um, things in Atlanta to see. We went to the aquarium and we went to Six Flags and then we came home. So if you're doing the math, six days, um, the, our days were from about a quarter till 5 a.m. until about 11 o'clock at night because as a ROTC mom, Got to hand out all the medicines at night, check with, in with everybody, um, make sure, you know, constant head counts, make sure everyone's there. The kids got a ton of freedoms on these trips because they're, they're staff members. They're, they're, be, they're rewarded with some, free, some freedoms, but that makes it harder for us to, you know, make sure everybody's okay. Reporting in to parents. Um, some parents are great not really hearing from their kids and other parents need a constant update. So um, that's where the moms come in and it was wonderful. We had a great time. So, sorry about all that. No, I'm not sorry. That's 20 minutes of things I wanted to share. So, moving on. Floss tube. Hold, please. I made notes. Where are they at? Okay. Floss tube. The Addicted Sisters. I'm an honorary sister. Thank you all so much for still um, remembering that that's what I wanted to be. Nancy is selling her home, and you can tell that it is just... Um, a stressful situation. I mean, it really is. Let me turn this light on. Hope it's not weird. A little bit weird. The clouds are, I'm, there's, the lighting is weird. Nancy's selling her home, so she's doing showings, and, you know, they had this huge, like, Christmas in July, this is what we're going to do every day, and Laura is on it. Laura is, like, finding her way to fit everything into the different days they had picked out. Nancy is like, I'll be lucky if I get a stitch in. And honestly, I feel you, girl. That is how I was. I took stuff on my trip. The charter bus was super comfy, but very bumpy. And I was like, trying to, to stitch. I just put it up and watch Netflix. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Laura, I feel you on just wanting to get to all your stuff. Like... Going through stash is like, it's a twofold experience. Like once it's kind of, it's kind of like alarming. Like I have this much stuff and I'd have to live to be 200 to stitch everything. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, I forgot I had this. I want to start that like tomorrow. I have no system. People ask me a lot, like, what's your plan? What's your system? My plan is, I hope I get to stitch the things. And one thing that I'm kind of trying to do is I've acquired a bunch of project bags because, um, like, awesome project bag makers out there enable me. But I think for now, I do want to get, like, two more. I want a patriotic one and I want another Christmas one. I don't know when that'll happen. But I'm sure that um, Mama Jones is going to throw one out there that I can't live without. But after that, after that acquisition, I will only, like, I'm only going to stitch as many projects as I have project bags for. And I'm not going to give myself a green light to order more bags. Like I said, there's two more that I want. I have a, like, vision of what I want for a Christmas one and kind of what I want for a patriotic one. So other than that, so I probably have, like, nine bags now, maybe, something like that, different sizes. Um, my computer is, like, making weird. Sorry, guys. I hear the fan on my MacBook, which I never do. Um, so I am thinking, I'm just not going to get any more bags. And if, when something like gets finished and graduates out of a project bag, I'll put another project in there. So that's my plan. Kitten Stitcher. I love the Hitchin Post. Y'all, her craft room. I'm so happy that you have a room. I'm so happy that with all the changes going on here, with all the changes that you've experienced this year, um, taking that leap of faith and following your, your your rekindled passion for the craft and for designing. I'm so happy you have a place that, that honors that. Like you deserve that. Everybody does. I don't have a place. I have a beautiful home on a beautiful wad on the coastline, which is gorgeous. Um, the trade off of that is that my shop is in my kitchen and all my stitching is built up around my chair in the living room. Cause I don't have an extra bedroom. We've got two kids, no extra bedroom, but, um, that's okay. Because someday I'm going to have that, that hitching post part do. Maybe that maybe you'll let me share that name. Um, I love it. Jen. Jen Stitchy Niche. 
Jan, I don't comment on your videos because I usually watch them on my television or, yeah, on my television usually. I watch everyone. I watch every single time. I absolutely love the chicken updates. I love your videos. I love that you're a shop owner just like me. And I feel like there's many times I refer people to you. Um, you probably don't ever have to refer anyone to me because you seem like you have the largest inventory, um, probably next to like one, two, three stitch, because anytime anybody needs anything, it can be found at Jen Stitchy Niche. So I love, I love your shop updates. I love your whips. I love your stitching. I'm thinking that when school starts, you might slow down a little, but I don't know because you've got a lot of finished items too. But the thing I wanted to share with you, Jen, and everybody else, where did it go? Pardon me. So, Jen in her last video, well, the last video that I saw, I'm assuming it's the last one, talked about Belle's Best Cookbook. And I never even heard of it. And let me tell you why. I'm in Florida, but I'm only about, I don't know, maybe 40 miles from the Alabama state line. Um, we call it LA here, Lower Alabama. The Florida Panhandle is different than any other part of Florida for that reason. So here we have Calling All Cooks. Now, y'all, look at look at this. This is my this is my Calling All Cooks. Can you see this? Like all you book lovers out there, cringe away because um, this cookbook is in pieces. Because I have loved it so well throughout the years. This is also, sad sad fact, this is my second one. The one I got when I was 18 years old is um, completely obliterated. So Calling All Cooks is our, it's even got, I don't even know what this is. It's probably like pie crust. This is the Telephone Pioneers of America's Alabama chapter book. So curious to know like I definitely want to order Bell's best um I'm curious to know how different they are because I mean we all cook southern food right most of us um I'm curious to know what's in yours that's not in here if you know what I mean so Jen if you don't have this 15 bucks on Amazon get it I know you love your cookbooks this it's just like yours it's like the old school type somebody typed all this up there were some volunteers somewhere that typed every bit of this. Um, it's got a spice chart. It's got everything. So the things I make out of here. Everything. Pretty much if you eat it in my house. It, it can be found in some form in this book. Including sorority girl pasta. So I wanted to share that with you Jen. It's a big one. It's fat. It's worth 15 bucks. I looked up your Bell's Best. And it was like $50. This is $15 because they just did a reprint not too long ago. Um, there's also, just like your Bell's Best, there is Calling All Cooks 2, Calling All Cooks 3, the best of Calling All Cooks. It's the first one, the yellow one, Calling All Cooks. That's the big daddy. That's the one you want to get. The other ones are just watered down versions, to, my, to what I can tell. So, I wanted to share that with Jen and everybody else, but I know that she's um, a cookbook person. So as far as cookbooks go, like one thing that I do is I check them out from the library because some of them are pricey and I feel like they really need a, like a test run to see if there's enough stuff in there that I would want, um, to buy or, you know, want enough to buy because if I just bought every cookbook I wanted to, I'd need three kitchens to house them all. So that's an idea. If you don't want to make the financial commitment or you're not sure, check them out from the library. See what you like and then put them on a wish list for Christmas. That's what I do. So I do have all my Pioneer Woman cookbooks and my best cook in the world by Rick Bragg is my favorite. Um, Jen, Rick Bragg, best cook in the world. It's wonderful. It's a story. It's, it's like a family biography mixed in with cookbook. So it's great. Another book that I'm all into. I've talked about John Hart before. This is Down River. Um, this is, it's not second in anything. Like, it's not a series, but it's the second book that he wrote based in the same location, um, which is Roan County. Um, I'm, I was going to read you all the intro, but I'm already running long on time, 30 minutes. So, the short version is, um, as a kid, this guy who's the, the main character... 
He witnessed some stuff that no kid should have to. He got accused of a crime he didn't commit. He had to leave town, and now he's back. And when he reappears in the town, another crime happens. So you can imagine how that goes. Beautiful Southern prose is how I would describe John Hart's writing. Very similar to Greg Isles. If you love Greg Isles, you will love John Hart. Um, this is also available on Audible and Kindle. This is the first edition. Uh, I got this at a place called Hossie's Book Index in Pensacola, which is just a wonderful used bookstore. They have everything that you could ever want. They've been open for 40 years, so um, way to go to them. I got this there, but I have it on Audible as well. So, Down River by John Hart. That's what I'm reading. What have I watched this week? On the trip, I downloaded The Keepers. Um, I believe Pam and Steph mentioned um, that show. They wa it, I had just finished The Staircase, which was very similar. Um, the Keepers is I, startling, stunning, and, well, very well done. So, that was a good one. And then I watched Glow. I downloaded the first season. I remember that as the show being on, I was like 13 or 14 years old when it was on TV. So it's fascinating to see the backstory. If you're a child of the 80s um, or you were born in the 70s, you remember the 80s and early 90s. Um, it's a really good like cultural time capsule. It, it makes me laugh when I see what they wear, what they drive, the music they listen to. That was all. That was all me. I probably secretly wanted to be on GLOW back when I was a teenager. I just don't remember that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I watched. That's what I read. Um, now let's talk about stitching. <laughs> 31 minutes. Why do I always look at that? I think I need to put, like, a piece of tape over the timer because it stresses me out, for real. Okay. Stitch. I don't know what I want to do first. I guess a stitchy update. We'll start with that. So, Tamara, most of y'all know her. Um, I think on Instagram, she's this Nana Stitches, maybe? Tamara Bowen. She's a customer of mine, a wonderful stitcher, and she's just gorgeous. I love watching her. I love listening to her. She's very graceful. Um, she's got three videos up as of this morning, and in her last video, she talks about Ronnie Rowe. So, he's going to be my featured kind of designer today. Um... I don't want y'all to be scared of his charts. I'm not that experienced of a stitcher. I mean, I cross-stitched on Ada forever. You guys know I've graduated to linen. I'm doing the Jeanette Douglas Patriotic Sampler style with Leslie Hurley, with Christine Slaughter, and I had to put it down. The specialty stitches on the linen are making me nuts. Pam, Pam is getting all her goodies together. I figured I'd let Pam get started, and I may pick it back up. I may bow out of this one because you should stitch what makes you happy with what you love. It is gorgeous. It's the most beautiful chart. I bought the super overpriced silks, all the embellishments. I felt exactly the same way that Christine did when I got the package and it was like smaller than this um, for the price that I paid for it, but it had everything I needed. And I think it kind of hurt my heart because I orient oriented my fabric like this way first. It should have been this way after I already stitched quite a bit. So then I did a redo. Sarah talked me off the ledge and um, it's gorgeous, but the specialty stitches on the linen are making me lose my mind. So I keep getting frustrated and putting it down. So when frustrated, start something new, right? <laughs> um, I reached out to Ronnie Rowe communicated with him via email and um, decided I was going to carry some of his charts and see what you guys think. Um, I will tell you not to be scared of them. They're super intimidating when you see the models and when you see like the pictures on the front. But as I always tell my kids, there's only one way to eat an elephant, one bite at a time. And that's what you do on these charts. And I'll walk through that a little bit. I'm going to show you the charts that I have of his available in the shop. And then I'm going to show you the one I'm working on. Williamsburg, 1776. There's no way to combat the glare here. Um, so if you can see, they're pixelated. Like from far away, it looks like a photograph. He photographs everything on a 45 degree angle. And then puts that onto a chart. 
and it's pixelated. So when you're up close, it looks like just black dots. When you get far away, you can see. Um, it's, it's all they're all stitched on 18. Excuse me, 18 count Ada. They're all stitched with two strands. <laughs> excuse me, two strands of. Um, I'm using Anchor Black, but you could use DMC. I think he used DMC. 18 count Ada, two strands, easy peasy. Um, it's been a joy so far. This is not the one I've done, but I'll show you in a minute. So that's Williamsburg 1776. This is the one that Tamara, I believe, purchased. The Music Teacher's House. This is the one that I'm working on. I love it. I love it so much. Again, photographed at a weird angle to capture all the light. Super pixelated when you get up close. Can you see that? When you get up close, it just looks like polka dots. When you get back, stunner. Market Square Tavern. Colonial Pathway. I wanted to start this one. I chose the other one. Oh, you can't start them all. Oh my gosh. Governor's Garden. Look. Look up. So up close, super pixelated. Far away, like a black and white photograph. Okay, that's the only ones I bought in the black and white series. They're called Pen and Ink. I have, he has like five more. So if these go well, I'll buy the other ones. These are color. Walkway to spring, same thing. When you when you sit sit back from this, it looks like a beautiful. Uh, the lighting is captured so beautifully when you get up close. All pixeled up. So all done on eighteen count. Midsummer tool shed. Same thing. You guys don't need to see them all up close, right? Midsummer portal. I love this. This is. I mean, I love this. These, I started with the black and white because these do have quite a few colors, um, which is what gives you the realism, but I'm not ready for that yet with it after, mm -mm, after Jeanette Douglas. Love you, Jeanette. Needed a break. And Midsummer Hostel. Absolutely beautiful. These are all real places photographed. He gives you a little bit of information about them. So, um... I'm going to show you, I'm going to show a wee bit of a pattern here because I don't want you, I mean, I feel like he would be okay with this because he's all about education and encouraging um, stitching. You won't be able to tell what portion this is of the chart anyway, so it won't make a difference. All right, here is, and this is just a portion of my progress because it's under the Q-snap, and <laughs> I switched my Q-snap out. I combined an 8x8 and an 8.5x11 and, and oriented it properly so that I would not have the Jeanette Douglas snafu with one of these. Can you imagine? I would be like, you guys would have to be on like crazy watch for me because if I did all this work and had it turned the wrong way, I would flip out. Um, so that's how much I've gotten done. Ah. Using my Anchor Black, which is available in my shop. Um, there's 12 skeins in a box. I'm doing, I'm selling it at six skeins because not everybody thinks they want 12 to start with. If you want 12, you get a box. If you want six, you get Lucy's. Um, like I said, I'm doing the music teacher's house. So I've done this window and I'm starting on the side of the house. And it means. It's going really fast, and what I explained, Tamara and I were uh, messaging, and what is wonderful about this is, like, I'm just, I'm just taking it bite by bite. So, like, I'm not, in my head, I'm not like, I have to hurry up and get finished with, you know, this Santa, or I have to finish this pumpkin, or whatever it is you're stitching, because I'm literally taking it 10 by 10 square by 10 by 10 square. I talked to Mr. Rowe. He doesn't he doesn't see the need for for him. Now he stitched all these. Like he didn't just 
take a picture and put it on a graph. He stitched all the models. So for him, he said he started in the middle, even though his wife, and he normally is a left-hand starter, left top, left corner starter, he started in the middle, and he does one block at a time, and don't stop like mid-block. That, that's my advice. So it's in my bag. It's in my, actually in a Christmas bag I got from Nani the Multicrafty Hermit. Um, I showed y'all this before, but that's where I've got it. Because, like I said, if I don't have a project bag for it, I'm not going to start it. And the only one I have left is a Christmas bag. So, all right. This is the part I'm going to show you. So, this is how I'm doing it. Like, don't freak out when you see this. Also, I can share this little portion because there's nothing you could do with this. So, this is the center. Um, and I'm just doing, I'm just focusing on one 10 by 10 block at a time. And it's on 18 count Ada, so it's really easy to see the the holes and not have to like count over two and all that stuff. So I'm just sitting down doing like one or two square. Now, my advice is if you can't finish, if you don't have time to finish a 10 by 10 uh, block, don't start it. Because if you finish midway, you're going to confuse yourself because they're all going to run together. But just do the 10 by 10. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going around the out, outside of the 10 by 10 stitch and then filling all the stuff in, in the middle. Outlining it, filling all the stuff in, in the middle. Over and over and over again. And yes, it means that in some places I'm carrying threads. And yes, it means that in some places I'm uh, like cutting and restarting. Who cares? Right? It's Ada. N not a lot shows through it. It's thick. Um, I can't tell you what a joy this is. I mean, it's awesome. I'm loving it. Loving it. So... Don't be scared of a Ronnie Rowe. If you want to start one, all I can tell you is run, don't walk, and do it because it's fantastic. So there's that. That's all I've stitched on because I'm loving it. I'm loving not having to figure out what symbol goes with what color, goes with whatever, and I cannot wait till it's finished, and I can't wait to have it framed because I think that is a show-stopping like, conversation piece to have in your home. When someone looks at it from far away, say, well, it's beautiful architectural black and white photography, and then they get up close and see it all pixelated, awesome. So, that leads us to a shop update. Um, quickly, I'm not, you know, you guys know most everything that's on the shop. But there is some stuff that hasn't gotten very much attention that I want to point out, okay? So that's what this segment is going to be about. Also, there's a coupon. It is Summer Heat. Capital, summer, lowercase heat, all one word, um, for free shipping over $25. Some of you have messaged me and said, the coupon code won't work. That's because it expired. But I'm going to put it through one more day. So anyone who's watching FlossTube, I'll put it in the show notes. Summer heat, free shipping over $25. All right. We've all seen this already. It's made the rounds. It arrived while I was out of town. So for everybody who pre-ordered for me, I'm sorry that you were, you know, four or five days, maybe even a week behind everyone else in getting it. However, if you pre-ordered and paid, you should have already received it based on tracking. It looks like everybody got theirs. Um, there's a few things in here that are super cute. There's one chart I want to show you, or one picture, that is the one thing that I want to do, like whenever I get a free project bag. I'm going to show you two, actually, because there's another one in here I think that y'all will love. So 54 and 97. This is one. It's by Pickle Barrel Designs. I think it is so cute. Google bus. I love it. So I have ordered the yellow, everything else I have already in stock. The yellow is um, Squash by Weeks. So I have, have that coming. I mean, that is so cute. So that's one thing that I saw that I was like, I mean, it's like totally fall. Back, back to school and Halloween. Bam, bam. Done one. There's a few things else in here, but I'm just going to show you two. This. I can see, I feel like this is going to be done by some folks. So, I think that's cool. And it's ready to party. Um, tell you who the designer is. Ready to party. Um, crusted, uh, 
uh, adaptation by Elizabeth Spurlock. Isn't that pretty? Like, I won't stitch that, but I think it's cool. So those are the two that really, like, popped out at me. There's chock-a-block full of 64 designs. So this is available at the shop. Use your free shipping coupon. Get it, get it, get it. These are a few that I've mentioned in other videos, but I want to draw your attention to them because they've been out of stock forever at the distributors and they're back. So, October 31st by Barbara Anna. That is back in stock. Cinnamon Stars. Yay! You heard it here. I'm not opening it because this is going to someone. Um, Cinnamon Stars. Absolutely gorgeous. I, it's, it's in the Sunday pile for me. A Wicked Plant. Look at that. It's a Venus flytrap. Is that what you call that? A little spider. These were all out of stock for a long time. So I don't know if they just weren't printed or if other shops had sucked them up. But um, yeah. Um, Where Liberty Dwells. This is a new chart. I think everyone has it in their shops now. But I just wanted to remind y'all that it comes with the finishing velveteen. Which that in itself is like... It, it comes from Lady Dot Creates. Whether you want to finish it in a pillow or a drum, you have enough to do one or the other. So, so cute. I love those. What are those called? Cornflowers? I don't know. I forget. We don't have those where we don't have those here in my yard, so I don't know what they are. But Shakespeare's Peddler. Fractor Bird. She had to do like two or three printings of this. I'm not sure how many, but this one comes with the spool, the twine, the jute, and it comes with um, the fibers that you need. And they're gorgeous. So, Fractor Bird. I know she has them on her shop site, which is awesome, but I have some too. So, free shipping if you want to take advantage of that, if you were on the fence on that. Um, and then I'm sure I talked about this in my last video, but just in case I didn't, because I was like running out of town when I put the last video up. Wise Old, there's a mat bothering me. Wise Old Owl by Raise the Roof. If you're, can I see that? If you're a Raise the Roof um, fan, um, Teresa told me that she hasn't sent this out to anyone else but my shop. That may have changed by now, I'm not sure. But to me, this reminds me of her personality so much. Can you just not hear her saying this? A Wise Old Owl sat on an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why aren't we all that wise old bird? I just, that's adorable. So, got plenty of those. Um, this is back in stock before freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. That's a little house needle works. And everything else I think is new to me except for, uh, yeah, this one. You're a grand old flag by Samplers Not Forgotten. This picture does not do this justice. I've seen this done on um, different people's Instagrams, and it is a stunner. Stunner, stunner, stunner. I just love it. So I know we're all feeling super patriotic. I super am after being at um, Terrace Island and all the other things we did. Okay, so that's the kind of reboots, things that are back in stock that have been gone for a while, um, and then that sample or not forgotten just hasn't really gotten that much attention, which surprised me. I have only a few of these. I'm obsessed with Michelle, the Striped Rose. She talks about this book all the time, A Proper Stitch by Darlene Osteen. So I searched high and low for the book, couldn't find it. The very next week on Hoffman, um, they put it on disc. So... What kind of bums me out about this is I have to get out my old computer because my new MacBook doesn't have a disk drive. But um, how fantastic that this is available. Um, on the disk, 60 stitches, 3 samplers with instructions and charts that are printer friendly. Um, you can browse all content by page, by word, phrase, or across numerous patterns. So, um, it also says... The Proper Stitch presents projects and stitch illustrations by Darlene Osteen that educate and improve your stitching skills. This is one of the few books available that actually shows both the front and the back of each stitch. It doesn't just show diagrams. It gives clear explanations of how they can be done properly. So, 
fantastic. I bought myself one, and I thought, if I buy one for me, I should buy at least a handful for the shop. So, I will list this at the end of the video. It's not listed yet. They're a little bit pricey, but they're cheaper than the book still. Okay. I'm going to rapid fire through this. Heartstring samplery. Also, these were waiting for me when I got back, so you've probably seen them already on Beth's video, Beth Twist's video. This is the Festive Little Fobs Woodland Edition. Love. Look at the hedgie. So cute. And the squirrel. So, those are available. Old Nantucket by Little House Needleworks. I love this. I'm not a New Englander or like any of that, but I do live on the water and I love this. Look at the whale. I mean, it has a whale and birds. Oh, so cute. You can tell I was like feeling the summer vibes when I ordered Summer in Nantucket. This has a mermaid riding a whale. You can't see it too well because it's kind of a washout. But lighthouse, whale, mermaid, bird, a whale weather vane. Are you kidding me? What? Love it. Sweet Summer by Abby Rose because Little Pink Houses. Michelle. Michelle, if you don't have this, which you probably do, I think you should for your Little Pink Houses wall. Love that. Christine, look up. Patriotic House Trio. Put those all in a row, girl. There are also, I think at Halloween, they were out of stock. They, they shorted me on my order. But I'm thinking if you put these on a big enough piece, there's going to be a trio for all the different seasons. How cool would that be? Like, walk through the year, through your little stitched town? Love that. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I love this. Love, love, love. This is Little House Needleworks, chart 76. Okay, y'all brace yourselves. Prairie Schooler fans, rejoice. I have all of the sampler seasons. I have summer, spring, autumn, and my very favorite, winter. This is probably the only one I'm gonna actually stitch, but I love these. I love the white work. Um, you know, I haven't opened one. I think it's probably white and 3371, if I'm guessing, and looks like maybe one other color. But I love the sayings on the winter one. In the dark gray days of winter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron and water like a stone. Oh my gosh. Anyway, they all have little sayings. They're all... They've all been out. These are reprints. They're paper. They're not cardstock, but I have all of them. So, I, I was pretty stoked about that. The old crow sampler. It, this includes the few little buttons that you need. I think there's three buttons, little teeny ones. And I have the red bird sampler on the way. So, if you get this and you want the companion, she's a coming. Spring Girl by Nikki's Creations. I have, no, Summer Girl. I have Spring Girl. I don't know which other ones I have, but she has strawberries in her dress. Is that not so cute? Love. My nemesis and also favorite patriotic chart, Patriotic Sampler. I mean, it's a, it's so pretty. Why does it, why did he stitch, it's this. This thing right here, let me tell you, if you're on linen and you get off on one of these stars, it's all wonked up and it suddenly looks like a mess. So that's where I'm at. But I did the flag twice. I did this flag twice and I did the words. But this here, whoo, I'm, I'm not giving up. I have all three, well, there's like six of these, but I ordered three to start us with and see what you think. Because I'm, thank you Linda Joe for my obsession with mini stockings, of which I've stitched none. And if I ever stitch them, Robbie's going to help me finish them. Please. You probably, you can say yes to that, Robbie, because it'll never probably happen and you'll be off the hook anyway. 
Um, but these are songs of Christmas. So, Over the River and Through the Woods. Here Comes Santa Claus. Frosty the Snowman. There are three more. I just started with three to see if anyone else likes little stockings like I do. Of course you do, right? And the final thing I want to mention from the shop is that by some freak of nature happenstance, I have some of Butterfly Fairy left. And this is a reprint, right? Am I right? Of course I'm right. I don't know how I still have these. I think I may have like wonked up the inventory initially because, you know, I did the pre-sale and everybody bought them and I'm not sure I added these back. So if you wanted a Mirabilia Butterfly Fairy, get it with free shipping, right? Over $25, we spent over $25. And I have some of Lady Mirabilia left. And this one comes with that beautiful butterfly. So it's, um, an anniversary release as far as they released it um, in commemoration of the 25th anniversary. It says Mirabilia Designs down here so beautifully and it has the charm. So I have some of these. And we talked about um, the Halloween magazine. I also still have, again, like there was a huge run on them like five times and now I have about a dozen um, Home for the Holidays left. So if you're getting in on the sow with all of us on Labor Day, is it Labor Day that we're doing that? I don't even know. I just get through the month I'm in. Um, the Cardinal Tis the Season Sal. Um, it's in Joy Noel, Noel. Is that the other book it's in? I don't know. It's in Home for the Holidays. I have it on the shop. It's 26 bucks, so it qualifies for free shipping. You should definitely get it. Also, don't forget the other, like, high dollar charts that are in there that will qualify you for free shipping, like the Hands Across the Sea. I still have some Eliza Belcox. I still have some random other charts of hers. Um, there's lots to be seen. The only other, like, thing I have to say is thank you guys so much for understanding my absence. I hope to be posting again soon. I kept this under an hour, even though I talked for 15 minutes about my week. How was your week? One last thing. We are going to have a 2,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will tell you that I will draw from the comments in next week's video. So if you don't want to enter, don't leave a comment. Send me a PM somewhere else. If you leave a comment in this video and you are over 18, you're a subscriber, you know the rules, I will assume that you want in on this. So... That's going to be awesome. 2,000 subscribers. It will include um, gadgets, charts, and goodies. That's all I'm going to tell you. Thanks, guys. I love you all so much. Have a great stitchy week. Bring on finals week for me. I'll see you soon.